Very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogan's European Outlook for the 24th, is it? Yep, it's the 24th of May and we are very quickly approaching meteorological summer. Before we continue with the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe. I do greatly appreciate that. Very busy weekend coming up. The Global Weather Report edition 93 will be released tomorrow, so a little bit of a mix-up with the normal uh, scheduling this upcoming weekend. So no weather talk tomorrow, but we will have the Global Weather Report issued tomorrow. So that's Saturday and Sunday, the all-important global, not global, <laughs> um, global weather report in the brain. Uh, the summer of 2024 forecast live stream this upcoming Sunday at 4 p.m. I hope that you can join me for that. I'm excited to deliver the verdict with what I expect to see coming up in the June through August period. And if you don't happen to be available, there is always a chance for you to watch that back at a later time. The, the video will be available here on the YouTube channel. But they, I'm excited to bring that on Sunday. I'm excited to bring the 93rd edition of the Global Weather Report tomorrow as well. So plenty of reason to stick around and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Lots of things going on at the moment. This was the temperatures yesterday afternoon. Warmest of the year so far for southern and central Finland where it has been very, very chilly. This is the anomaly for the month so far. Unfortunately, I don't know why, but the, the Weatherbell website is only showing CDAS data for this month up until the 14th of May. That's both for global as well as Europe. I don't know what the reason for that is, but it looks as if uh, this could be one of the coldest Mays on record for far eastern Europe. It also is likely to be the warmest for the UK on record as well. So temperatures high as 27, 28 Celsius, all the way up into Arctic, Northwest Russia, and even um, you know mid twenties, all the way up towards the, uh, the, the Arctic circle of Finland and Sweden as well. So uh, so yeah, um, interesting stuff. Uh, let me see here. There was some interesting uh, things with regards to the heavy rain event that was seen a few days ago. The driver stuck for hours in the Edinburgh area of Scotland. So the Scottish capital is seeing major flooding due to that rainfall event that we've seen a few days ago. This is the scene from the Edinburgh City Bypass. Um, so chaotic conditions. Um, and this was the, the Princess Street Gardens in the centre of Edinburgh, just below the castle seeing major flooding here. According to the article, the highest recorded rainfall over a 36-hour period for Scotland was 111 millimetres fallen within, like I say, 36 hours at the SEPA site bush near Pennycook. So uh, obviously uh, there was parts of England that received as much as 122 millimetres at Honister Pass in Cumbria, and Carlisle recorded its wettest May Day on record as well. So this just continues to go with the wet theme that we have had for quite some time now. So this is a tweet here uh, by the Met Office showing that 122 millimetres of rain fallen within a 48-hour period. Also an interesting tweet here by Dave, Dave Throp, uh, if I can find it. But he basically says that, uh, no, unfortunately I can't find it. But he basically says that uh, according to uh, data, th this uh, first five months of the year is the wettest in, in England and Wales history. Um, so that's records dating back to 1931, which I thought was quite an interesting stat. And uh, unfortunately, folks, you're asking the possible question, are we going to see any reprieve as we move towards meteorological summer? Well, according to concepts, no would be the answer to that. It looks as if it's showing wetter than average conditions. But it depends on what model you look at. Because if you look at the CFSV2 for the same period, it's showing drier than average. So take your pick. I would actually be leaning more towards the wetter than average as opposed to the drier than average. The NMME model is also indicating a wetter than average June, as you can see here. Looking at the, uh, this is the, the 500 millibar geopotential heights compared to average at the the 18,000 foot level. I want to show you this because this is quite interesting. Remember, we've seen so much severe weather flooding um, across the heart of Europe, anywhere from Poland all the way to the low countries and obviously the UK as well. 
But the reason for this is because we've got this uh, Omega block situation showing up. Now, this is very similar to May 2023, by the way, uh, where we've seen a block in high over Scandinavia and areas of low pressure getting deflected to the south under that block. So uh, quite unsettled conditions across Spain, Portugal, France, into the central heart of Europe. Now, we'll play through this. You can see what is taking place here. There's that persistent block to the north of the UK, hence why we've actually got slightly drier than average soils in western Scotland. More on that in the in the Global Weather Report tomorrow. Do check that out, by the way, because there's going to be a lot of content on that with regards to the drought uh, versus uh, deluge in many parts of the world. We'll look at that in specific detail, by the way, so check that out tomorrow. Uh, but you can see here as I play through this loop, this continuous undercutting of lows trying to move in to the block to the north, and that has been the mainstay. Now, this is now as we move into early next week. Look at that there for Monday the 27th of May. Area of low pressure over the UK and Ireland continuing to keep this rather unsettled theme going. Now, there is an attempt at higher pressure trying to build from the Azores, from Iberia, up into the UK, but keep your eyes uh, closely fixed to that area of low pressure, the trough between Scotland and Iceland. That means it's going to flatten the, the heights and we're going to continue to see this kind of back and forth battle between high and low pressure. Now, notice here as we move into the first few days of the month, now this is off the GFS deterministic. This is one operational model run not the uh, ensemble, not a collection of all different runs. So you have to take this with a pinch of salt. But the, the one take home from this is the building of high pressure to the west of the UK and Ireland as we move into the first days of meteorological summer. And it looks as if it's indicating that we could have a bit of a north to northwesterly airflow to start the month. And if you look at the temperature anomalies, isn't really anything... Uh, particularly to get excited about. This is the temperature anomaly chart here uh, as we move through the first few days of June. So let's skip back and I'll show you here just real quick what the model's indicating. Cool and unsettled looks to be the beginning of this summer. Is that going to be the case as we move deeper into June and beyond? Well, that will remain to be seen, but certainly this is not a particularly great look as we start the month of June and summer, if you're looking for uh, some fine summery weather. Finally, this is the GFS overview, precipitation, cloud, temperature, and pressure chart. You can see here, very, very unsettled conditions, once again, across the heart of Europe. And we've also got plenty of showers, cloud cover to speak about across the UK. Now, as we go into the first half of the weekend, looking not too bad, we're in between areas of low pressure, you can see here that we do have uh, fairly decent conditions to start the weekend. Uh, with sunshine, it will feel pleasant. But you notice here that we're keeping our eyes fixed on this feature moving out of the North Sea towards the east side of England. We've also got the frontal boundary associated with low pressure to the west, aging in across Ireland, Northern Ireland and the southwest of the UK. Then that really sets the tone for the second half of the weekend. We're going to be having widespread showers. Sunshine and showers likely, but we could have some fairly frequent shower activity during the course of Sunday. So it doesn't look as if it's a particularly great day on Sunday. How is Monday looking? It looks as if we're going to maintain the sunshine and shower regime. We may get more of a break in between those showers, which may help for any outdoor activity. But as we move into the early portions of next week, more areas of low pressure bringing more disturbed weather. Charge or longer spells of rain looks to be the case as we end the month of May. So unfortunately, I don't have anything particularly exciting to bring you. So we're just going to have to hang far and wait and see what the forecast will bring this upcoming Sunday with regards to the summer. So stay tuned for that. Like, share and subscribe. And I hope you can join me on Sunday for the live stream. Bye for now.